So, to do list for this before we go racing again, first on the list, coilovers, the gas ones that I bought, which I took one look at after getting them home and realised they were absolutely pumped. Ah, no, sorry, I'm not letting that go. We need to be able to fix these guys. They might be serviceable coilovers, so yeah. let's, that's, let's... That's the whole point of gas, is that they are rebuildable. As opposed to max speeding, which no matter how much rebuilding, they're still shite. Yeah. The top mounts, as we discussed before, were wrong. So I went and bought a full set of four Mark II top mounts, which cost an amount of money. And then for reasons, reasons, I completely negated that because we have a source, but we don't have a source. Anyway. So top mounts are going to go on and then we'll get a look at the other problem. Pillow ball lower mounts. Go on. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit shit. But what also came with these coilovers was two spare rear coilovers. Obviously fucked beyond belief, but what they have in them is not bad pillow balls. Like that one's in really good nick. This guy though. It's a bit crunchy, but the up and down is not bad. I'm going to take it out and get a look at it. But the reason why I say this is a good coilover is it's serviceable. If you look, where's the light? There we go. If you look really closely, circlip. This is probably a prime example of why you don't go full rose joint pillow ball on your road car. Because this is, you know, these are great for going around the track and doing all crossy stuff and you get no play, nice and tight, but it's make still car handle great. But it, the problem that you've got with these is these will not take Glasgow roads. Or UK roads. For or any, any UK roads for that matter. It's, it doesn't matter how good the pillow balls are, how big they are. If you drive on crusty roads where there's loads of dust, I mean, you, this is usually what happens with these. They get full of dust and then it just becomes like a grinding paste. And also the impact of potholes. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's. I'll be honest. These are these are shit. Like th these are shit caused problems. Because if you look at this guy here, watch again. I'll get the light on. You'll see that this is probably the most like the one that I'm going to debate even using. Corrosion, corrosion on the bit that when you put it there is going to be an interference fit or a tolerance fit rather, I should say. So, yeah, that's, shite. Yeah, and that is pretty much why all your even your kind of pretty high-end coilovers have got bushes. Bushes. Because as much as people like fancy rose joints, bushes do have a purpose, and that is compliance. Compliance. And a bit of life. Yeah. To... So, I mean, I'm not ruling out bushes as a potential here. I'm going to get this out and actually measure it up, and if there is an off-the-shelf shock absorber bush, mm -hmm. it sure is to fucking To be fair, I, I have a strong feeling, though, that they're the same as a lot of the ones you see with gas because they use a lot of off-the-shelf stuff. I think that'll be like... Your usual rally car bottom bush yeah, could be. sizing. So. Might get rubber ones. We'll have a look, but let's get them apart first. to do the top mounts.
Right, well that's them categorically fucked now. Right, remember a couple of episodes I fitted these plasticky door things? Don't, like, for any gain that these gifts stiffening the door up, total waste of time for the pain it causes. Constantly having to fight to get the door open, and worse, when this happens, which is bad enough, but when your driver's door shuts and you think it's shut, and then you do an auto test with the door half shut, it does give you the fear a wee bit. And you don't really know until you start cornering and you feel the dump, dump, dump. So, that, nah, not even for a race car. I'm gonna grease them up and see if it kind of saves things, but I've kept the old rubber ones and I'm fairly sure they're gonna end up going back on. Anyway, the real reason I've got this door open is I'm gonna take the sill plate off, get the carpet out, and I'm gonna get a look at this ECU. So, yes, we've done a few things here to get the car ready for the next race, but I also need to start thinking about the long game here. Remember, we've got ITBs to go on, and that's not just going to be a plug and play thing with the original ECU. The reason being, stock MX-5 engine has quite a few things on it that help it run. Things like idle control valve, various sensors that plug into the manifold, and a whole load of gubbins. When that isn't connected to the ECU, it's going to hate life. It's not going to know how to make the engine run, and it's just generally not a good idea. So when you put ITBs on, you need to recalibrate the way this entire engine is operated and fueled to suit that. That means deleting a whole load of these sensors and remapping the whole thing from scratch. Unfortunately, a stock ECU is not going to be able to do that. But what is, is an aftermarket standalone. This is a Link G4 Plus. Now, this actually came with the throttle bodies as part of a full package. And it is used, well I say used, it's never actually been fitted. But this will have to go in along with the throttle bodies in order for them to work. What I need to do though, obviously we're not fitting it fully. I want to make sure it is going to fit because whilst quite often things are sold as plug and play, as you've probably gathered by now, very rarely, if ever, is anything plug and play. You know what I really love? When manufacturers go out their way to make life really difficult. That's what's called a shear bolt. And it's a security device. It stops you getting in to steal the ECU. There's one on each side, but that will not stop me stealing an ECU. Not even close. Ah, yes. I see you the way you're doing. A succulent Chinese meal. Right, that was a whole saga that we won't get into. Um, needless to say, it's off and we'll put normal bolts in. But what we're left with is MX-5 three plug ECU. And what we have is one Mazda MX-5 NA two pin ECU. Plug and play. Uh, right, so clearly these will fit a Mark II 1.8 because it's the same bloody head as a Mark I, but that won't. So, well, I can sell the link and buy another one that fits a Mark II. Or we can do an adapter loom. Right. Well, these aren't going on next month, are they? now officially fucking winter. Just eyeing up that really cool looking van over there. It's cool, isn't it? It's cool. I didn't know you were in Mercedes vans. Anyway, get yourself. We have the wheels off. Now, there are a number of things I have ordered, which, some stack. of which is going on. Stack of bits. Stack of bits. We're going to have to address the brake lines, and there's a reason for this. <laughs> Guitar string spring, springs to mind there. I may have put the big brakes on and then quickly discovered these have Boing. No flex left in them, so we have <laughs> they went are a bit tight. A bit tight. 
So, got some braids to go on the front. Uh, similarly, I have braided lines that I ordered for the low cost that don't work, so they can go on the back. And what else? We started, we started Operation Throttle Body. So, yeah, I was like, oh, white band, just order a white band. Bosch LSU white band. Turns out there's more than one. There is more than one. So, what I've ordered is the Bosch LSU 4.9. And this is a 4.2. So yes, we have an old Innovate lying about, yep. and it uses a different one. So. Which these are actually good. I've run these before many a times, and they're absolutely fine. But you just obviously need to run the old 4.2 sensor, run the 4.9. Yeah. Other points to note, we have in the box, what's in the box? Mega Squirt. MS3. So as we discussed, the link's absolutely not going to fit, but that guy will. So. Yes, the, the link would have involved a lot of a, uh, Pain, misery, uh, hell. You're making an adapter harness to run the old kind of two plug connector to the three plug and all that, and it's just it's just not worth the hassle. Especially when somebody somebody will buy that. Yeah, and so just plug that it is in. now so. for sale, and hopefully by the time this goes out, will be sold. If not, and you want a nice cheap link, let me know. Whilst we have the car in the air, another thing I wanted to look and check was look at that nice fresh new lambda sensor in there. That is also, I'm going to hope, the correct. It will be, yeah. Uh, it will be. They're all M16, um, are they not? Uh, they're all M16. M18, M18 something, like that, something like that. Something like that. Which but is good because I did actually order a weld in bung, uh, but the problem is it was delivered by Hermes. That's what's gone. Which means that they've claimed they've delivered it. The picture is pitch black because the driver yeah. has just went, took a picture there, and tossed it in the fucking bin because that's what Hermes do. Yeah. And I can back this up with multiple evidences of this happening. Anytime it's a small envelope, the Hermes driver here puts it in the bin. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, usually with the wide bands, you want, you, you want to keep them a certain distance away from the manifold, yeah. but it's still, it's, right. it, it's still got the stock down pipe, and we're like, the hassle involved in putting a bung in a stock down pipe, it's not even really worth it, is it? Yeah. To be honest, when that is a reasonable distance away, it's not turboed. Yeah, it'll be fine. So, I'm going to get stupidly hot. I'm going to say it's going to be fine. So, what we're going to do is swap the brakes, take the car drive this weekend. So, maybe in this episode, we're going to chuck the Mega Squirt in and see if we can get the Mega Squirt to run on the stock in that manifold. Once it does that, and we know it runs and everything's good, the only missing element is trumpets. Trumpets. A little bit. <laughs> It's always a good idea. If you've got a car that runs and drives, change the ECU first. Yeah. Check it still, it still starts, runs, idles. We'll put a quick wee tune on it just so that we can drive it around, check everything's okay, and then immediately put the trumpets on because we'll need to... Jump up and down. We can run it on the kind of map-based setup just for just now, just to start it and check it runs, but as soon as we put the throttle bodies on, we'll need to go to Alpha N. So that will mean we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into all that, and it's yeah. going to be in another episode, clearly. But yes, uh, yeah, that's that's to come. So anyway, brakes the now. Let's do brakes. Not so long ago, we did all the polybushing with the exception of this one bush. Remember I said I was going to get some threaded rod and we would do the thing later? Well, this is how we do the thing later. The funny thing is they're actually the worst looking of them all. I know, I'm kind of hoping this might make a difference. So, in order to take out bushes without a press or removing anything from the car whatsoever, what you do is, threaded rod, nut, washer, big socket, small socket, that will pass through the hole with the grip washer, nut, shunt that up as Bish much as possible, take up the slack on this side, and do this. Look at that. Look at that. Should I not? This is the slide situation. Take that out, take that out, take that out. Sorted. Science. New bush in, which is a two part, so don't you need ball of it. Pop them in. Put the pin in. Put the pin in do the thing. Bushes completed. It. Done.
Well, at least it's clean. The problem I've got here is I am out of weekend, Sunday afternoon. We still don't have coilovers on. And if anything, I've actually got less of a line on how to resolve these coilovers than I did before. I honestly don't know what the solution is going to be. <laughs> I could have just bought new, really fancy Olins by this point, with the amount of used shite and cheap shite that I've bought. But anyway, don't harm the negatives, look at the positives. It handles okay, it's clean, it runs. However, we do still have a couple of weekends to go before the next auto test. So I think I'm going to roll the dice. In the next episode, we're going to throw on the ITBs. We've actually done enough prep where if we can just fire them on and get a quick map on it, it should be doable. Should be doable. Does this sound convincing yet? I'm not convinced, but I've got to have a bit of faith. Yeah, let's do it. So that's to come. Until then, like, bell, subscribe that you see in the bottom. Patreon.com slash tools and track to say thanks for not seeing an ad for the whole episode. And until next weekend, guys, try safe. And don't buy shite coilovers. <laughs>